Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn to state Hess's law of heat summation and to apply Hess's law to obtain the enthalpy change of a given reaction from the enthalpy change of a number of other reactions. In the earlier videos, we learned how to determine the enthalpy change of a reaction by using a technique called as calorimetry. Sometimes we may encounter a situation where it is difficult to carry out a reaction in the calorimeter. There could be several reasons for it. For example, some reactions require extreme conditions of temperature and pressure. These reactions cannot be carried inside a calorimeter. Or maybe the reaction is part of a complicated multi-step pathway which cannot be accomplished inside a calorimeter. For such reactions, we can determine the enthalpy change from tabulated thermochemical data. There are two common ways that we use to do this. One, use Hess's law. Two, use standard enthalpy of formation data. In this video, we will look at the Hess's law. According to Hess's law, if a reaction takes place in several steps, then the enthalpy change of the overall reaction is equal to the sum of enthalpy changes of individual steps. For example, we have a reaction A changes to C, which takes place in two different steps. First, A gets converted into B, and the enthalpy change for this reaction is 50 kilojoules. Let's call this reaction 1. In the second step, the B, which is the product of the reaction 1, gets converted into C. The enthalpy change for this reaction is minus 200 kilojoules. Let's call this reaction 2. Since the product of the first reaction is the reactant of the second reaction, when you add these two reactions, we can cancel them out. So, the overall reaction when you add these two steps is A gives C. This is the reaction we wanted in the first place. Since we added reaction 1 and 2 to get the desired reaction, we can add the delta H values of reaction 1 and 2 to get the delta H value of overall reaction. That is, delta H overall is equals to delta H of reaction 1 plus delta H of reaction 2, that is 50 kilojoules minus 200 kilojoules. If you do the math, we get delta H overall is equals to minus 150 kilojoules. It is important to keep in mind that the reaction conditions for all these three reactions must be exactly the same in order to be able to use the Hess's law. Because if we change the reaction conditions, the delta H value changes. Next, let us try to understand why the Hess's law works. To understand why the Hess's law works, let us plot the enthalpy values of all the reactants and products on a graph. From the overall reaction, we can say that the enthalpy of C should be 150 kilojoules lower than the enthalpy of A. Let us plot this on the graph. Next, from reaction 1, we can say that the enthalpy of B should be 50 kilojoules greater than A. Let us again plot this on the graph. And from reaction 2, we can say that the enthalpy of C is lower than the enthalpy of B by 200 kilojoules. We learned earlier that the enthalpy is a state function. Therefore, 
the enthalpy change between the reactant A and product C is always the same no matter what path the reaction follows to get from the reactants to products. In other words, the enthalpy change for a reaction remains the same whether the reaction occurs in one step, that is the direct conversion of A to C, or several step when A first converts to B and then B converts to C. So the reason Hess's law works is that enthalpy is a state function. Let us now apply Hess's law for some chemical equations. Let us say we need to determine the enthalpy change of the following reaction which is very difficult to conduct in the lab inside a calorimeter. We can take other reactions with known values of delta H and add those reactions to obtain the desired reaction. For example, the enthalpy changes of the following reactions are known. 2 moles of NO gas gives 1 mole N2, 1 mole O2. The enthalpy change for this reaction is minus 180.6 kilojoules. And the second reaction is 2 moles of CO reacts with 1 mole of O2 to form 2 moles of CO2 gas. The enthalpy change for this reaction is minus 566 kilojoules. Now, if we add reaction 1 and 2, 1 mole of oxygen on the product side and 1 mole of oxygen on the react reactant side gets cancelled and we get the resultant reaction which is the reaction that we wanted in the first place. Therefore, the enthalpy change for the overall reaction is equal to the sum of enthalpy changes for reaction 1 and 2 that is minus 180.6 kilojoules and minus 566 kilojoules. If we do the math we get delta H for overall reaction is equal to minus 746.6 kilojoules. In this example, the reactions 1 and 2 add up to give the reaction that we want. But most of the times, we have equations which require further manipulations before adding them up. In the next slide, we will learn what manipulations we can do to a thermochemical equation and how it changes the enthalpy of that thermochemical equation. There are two types of manipulations that we can do. One, we can flip or reverse a reaction. When we flip or reverse a reaction, the sign of the delta H is changed. For example, let us consider the following reaction. One mole of A gives one mole of B. Enthalpy change for this reaction is 50 kilojoules. If we flip or reverse this reaction, the products becomes reactants and the reactants becomes products. That is, one mole of B gives one mole of A. The enthalpy change for this reaction would be minus 50 kilojoules. Remember that the sign of the enthalpy change tells us the direction of energy flow. If the reaction 1 absorbs 50 kilojoules of energy when going from 1 mole of A into 1 mole of B, then the reaction 2 which is opposite of reaction 1 should release the exact same amount of energy. Again, this goes back to the fact that the enthalpy is a state function. The second kind of manipulation that we can do to a thermochemical equation is we can multiply the reaction with an integer. When we do so, 
the value of the enthalpy change should also be multiplied by the same integer. Again, let us consider the same example reaction. 1 mole of A gives 1 mole of B and the delta H of the reaction is 50 kilojoules. Let us say we multiply this reaction with a number 3. What it means is we are now starting the reaction with 3 moles of A and it is forming 3 moles of B. So the enthalpy change of this resultant reaction will be 3 times as much as the original reaction which is 150 kilojoules. This again goes back to the fact that enthalpy is an extensive property that is it depends on the amount of the substance. As we increase the amount of the substance that is taking part in the reaction, the enthalpy change increases proportionally. Let us now look at an example in which we have to further manipulate the given equations before applying Hess's law. Let us now take an example in which we have to further manipulate the given reactions before applying Hess's law. This is a typical question that you get in the exams. Calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction using the following equations. Let me now explain how I do this problem. We need to use the three reactions given, manipulate them and add them up to get the required reaction. There are two things that we will focus on. One, the reactants and products of the required reaction and the coefficients of the required reaction. Let us do this. C2H4 is one of the reactants of the required reaction. And in the list of given reactions, the only reaction that has C2H4 is reaction 1. And it is on the reactant side of the reaction 1. We want the C2H4 to be on the reactant side. So we can use the reaction 1 without flipping or reversing. Next, in the required reaction, the coefficient of C2H4 is 1. And the coefficient of C2H4 in the given reaction is also 1. So we can use the reaction 1 without multiplying it with any number or integer. So let's just write down the reaction 1. C2H4 plus 3O2 gives 2CO2 plus 2H2O and enthalpy change is minus 1410 kilojoules. Next, let us look at H2 gas. Hydrogen gas is on the reactant side of the required reaction and its coefficient is 1. In the list of given reactions, the only reaction that has hydrogen gas is reaction 3. And in reaction 3, hydrogen gas is on the reactant side, so we don't need to flip the reaction. And its coefficient is 1. So we can use the reaction 3 without multiplying. So let me write down reaction 3 as it is without manipulation. Next, let us look at C2H6 in the required reaction. Ethane gas C2H6 is on the product side of the required reaction. And in the list of given reactions, the only reaction that has ethane gas in it is reaction 2. And ethane gas in reaction 2 is on the reactant side. However, we want ethane gas to be on the product side, which means 
we need to flip reaction too. Next, let us look at the coefficient of ethane gas. The coefficient of ethane gas in the required reaction is 1. And the coefficient of ethane gas in the given reaction is also 1. So, we can use the reaction 2 without multiplying it with any integer. Let me write down the flipped reaction. This flipped reaction is exact opposite of reaction 2. Therefore, the enthalpy change for this reaction would be equal in magnitude but opposite in sign to that of reaction 2. That is, delta H is equals to plus 1555 kilojoules. Let us now add all the three reactions. We have three water molecules on the product side and three water molecules on the reactant side. We can cancel them out. We have 3.5 moles oxygen on the reactant side and same number of moles on the product side. They get cancelled. Two carbon dioxides get cancelled. And if we add up the remaining reactants and products, it gives us the desired reaction or required reaction. So we need to add the enthalpy changes of three manipulated reactions to find out the enthalpy change of the resultant reaction. That is, delta H is equal to minus 1410 minus 280 plus 1555. If we do the math, we get minus 135 kilojoules. So the trick here is to keep focusing on the reactants and products of the required reaction and the coefficients of the required reactions. If a particular substance is on the reactant side in the required reaction but on the product side in one of the given reactions, we need to flip that reaction. And if the number of moles of a particular substance in the required reaction is more, then multiply the given reaction with that number. 